Oh, God bless you. Welcome to our channel. I believe God brought you here today because God has a word for you. You're not here by mistake. You're here by the divine providence of God because God brought you here because God has a message that will change your life. So right now, open your ears, open your mind, open your heart, and receive this wonderful word from God. I'm excited to pick up where we left off last week. Listen, we are continuing a series of sermons this month that we've been preaching and teaching together under the general rubric of make the adjustment. You know, last week I talked about the fact that sometimes we have to make small changes to get big results. Adjustments are simply small alterations or movements designed to achieve a desired fit. And I want you to understand, many of us are not getting the most out of life and not living our best lives and not seeing everything that God has for us because we're slightly out of alignment. We're slightly ill-adjusted. If we make certain adjustments in this season, I believe that we will be able to get more, see more, do more, and be more simply because we've made the adjustment. So this week, as we continue the series, Make the Adjustment, I want you to join me in the Old Testament book of 2 Kings. And I want to read for you today from 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17. Look what the word of God says. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Armenians are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king every, uh, tells the king the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? Asked the servant. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Listen, I want to tag this text during this Make This Adjustment series very simply. It's already there. It's already there. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a, in a situation and noticed that two different people in the same situation saw the situation completely differently? But how we see the world and how we see our situations are often, if not always, based on our perspective and our perception. How we see the world and how we take that information in often identifies what we do, how we act, and how we move. Let me show you. Uh, when I was in the fifth grade, I had a fifth grade teacher. Her name was Miss Blackburn. As a matter of fact, her name was Gloria Blackburn. And I'm not afraid to say it, I did not like Miss Blackburn. And I was not alone. Nobody in my class liked Miss Blackburn because she was the meanest woman we had ever met. When I tell you, she was mean as a rattlesnake. This is a woman who found a way to yell at the class each and every day. For some reason, every day she would yell at us. She would find a reason to just go plumb off. So much so that we would just brace ourselves for it. We knew that after recess, Miss Blackburn was going to go off before we went into our afternoon of work. And this is what happened. One day, we knew we weren't going to get yelled at. 
And we knew we weren't going to get yelled at because the vice principal at recess had commended us in front of the entire school for being a great class. And she said, if all the classes were like that class, things would be so much better. So we walking back to class and we are excited. We're, going, we're not going to get yelled at. It's going to be an easy afternoon. That woman yelled at us anyway. And all of us are sitting there like, yo, what am I missing? She was the meat. I'm still traumatized by it now. But here's the interesting thing. My parents loved Miss Blackburn. She was their favorite of my teeth. They liked all my teeth. They had a special place in their heart for Miss Blackburn. And I could not understand why. But here's the interesting thing. At the end of the year, my fifth grade class had the best citywide test scores, not in our building, not in our grade, but in our entire district. And we were third in the entire city because of Ms. Blackburn. And, 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 and here's the weird thing. I still don't get down with Ms. Blackburn. I know I'm grown, fifth grade was a long time ago, but certain stuff just scars you. And what I realized is that my parents could see something that I could not. My parents could see what Ms. Blackburn was trying to do. I could only see how she was doing it. My parents could see what she was trying to accomplish. I could only see what I was going through and what I perceived to be misery every day. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that two Two people can be in the same situation or know the same person and have different perspectives and different perceptions of that situation and those people. And those different perspectives and different perceptions will, ex will extremely affect how they see, what they do, how they feel, and how they operate. You got to remember, our perception, very, our, you got to start with our perspective. Our perspective, very simply, is how we see stuff. A perspective is a point of view. It's our particular attitude or way of regarding something. In other words, it's how I'm taking in information. And the way I'm taking in information is always based on where I am. If I'm sitting high, I see it one way. If I'm sitting low, I see in a completely different way. Same information, but my perspective will change how I see that information. But what changes that is our perception. Our perception is different than our perspective because our perception is what we do with the information once we have it. Our perception is how we look at that information and what we interpret from that information. In other words, our perspective is what we see. Our perception is the spin that we put on it. And I want y'all to understand that sometimes in life, both our perspective and our perception can be wrong. And too many times, if we're completely honest, we have gone through life with the wrong perspective and the wrong perception, and it has made a difference in our lives. And that difference has not always been positive. Listen, I want you to understand as we're making these adjustments, sometimes you've got to adjust your perspective and your perception so that you can more clearly see reality. I want you to understand there are times in life when we are missing what's going on because our perspective is skewed, which has messed up our perception and blocked us from seeing what's going on. There are times in life when you think you're you're going through hell when you're not really going through hell you're actually being made blessed and better there are times when you think it's the best day of your life but you look back and realize that this was not doing you any good what I want us to understand is we've got to make the adjustments so that our perspective and our perception don't just give us a cockeyed view but give us a revelation of what God is doing I want y'all to understand a revelation is different than a perspective or a perception because a revelation very simply is God peeling back the veneer, God peeling back the curtains and letting you see what's actually going on. And that's what we find here in 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 8 through 17. We find a man named Elisha. Elisha is a prophet of God. 
Elisha is the uh, successor to Elijah the prophet. And we get to this place where Elisha is living in Israel and Elisha is informing the king of Israel what his enemies are doing. I want you to understand, there are going to be times in life when you need to know that God will inform you of what your enemies are trying to do. God will inform you of what your haters are planning. God will inform you of what other folk have tried to set you up for and set you up against. And you've got to be able to see that clearly so that you can move appropriately. The Bible tells us that Elisha is so good at this that the king of the Armenians begins to accuse his own folk of treason. Bible tells us that he starts saying, look, somebody snitching. Somebody is not with us. Somebody is telling the king of Israel what we're planning because every time we plan something, he figures out a way around it. And this is what the Bible tells us. These officers say, no, no. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king the very words that you are speaking. And the king makes a very simple, the king makes a very simple decision. Go get him. Take him out of the picture so that I can get done what I need to get done. Now that's the backstory, but this is what I want you to see. Imagine you're Elisha's servant and this is how you wake up one day. Bible tells us that one day Elisha's servant goes outside. I can imagine, he, he done got up, got a little bit of coffee, going outside to get the paper, and he looks up and he sees the Armenian army camped outside their tent. Can you imagine how freaked out he had to be? Understand, he's a new servant to Elisha. He hasn't been there the whole time. Elisha's last servant got in trouble for, well, some stuff. You know, you gotta read your Bible and understand what happened. This is a new servant. And he walks out, he's thinking, listen, it's just gonna be another day in the neighborhood. He's going outside, get the paper. And all of a sudden, the whole army is camped out outside. It's, it was probably like, uh, if y'all saw the movie American Gangster with Denzel Washington, Denzel Washington, when he's about to get arrested, he comes outside the church and every cop in New York City is outside. And Richie, Richie, whatever his name was, the guy played by um, the dude who played Gladiator. I can't even remember his name right now. Don't really matter. Denzel comes out, sees all of these cops. The, the, they've cordoned off traffic for blocks and all he sees are police and the guy that's there to arrest him. And Denzel doesn't freak out. Denzel knew this was going to happen. But I imagine Elisha's servant, who's not a gangster, Elisha's servant, who was like, look, I'm just trying to roll with the man of God, do what he tells me to do, make his life a little bit easier. He freaks out. Because what would you do if the army that's trying to defeat Israel has decided today we not fighting Israel we coming for y'all too. All of us, y'all too. They not men of war. They don't have swords. They don't have shields. He freaks out. And I'm just going to be honest. I ain't mad at him. It's a reasonable response. Sometimes situations that we are in, the only reasonable response is to freak out. The only reasonable response is to lose your mind and just kind of fall into fight or flight. And I want you to understand this. While it's a reasonable response, while it makes sense, sometimes you've got to be unreasonable. Write it down in the comments, I'm getting unreasonable. Sometimes you got to be unreasonable because what's reasonable wasn't, isn't going to work. What's reasonable isn't really what's going on. He saw what was right in front of him and he reacted to what he saw, but what he saw was not all that was there. The reason we know he freaked out, look what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in verse, um, I told y'all I wanted to go get my eyes checked and they're getting bad. Uh, Bible tells us in verse 15. Serving the man of God goes up early next morning. The army is outside and he finds his, he finds Elijah and says, oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? He's real simple about it. He's like, look, I see what's going on and I'm trying to figure out what move we may need to make. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do because 
this ain't right. This ain't what I signed up for. How many of y'all have been in a situation you're like, this is not what I signed up for? And that's not what we say when we're being blessed. That's not what we say when things are going well. When things get bad and they happen all of a sudden, sometimes we look and go, this is not what I signed up for. And Elisha's servant is like, look, man, they out there. What are we going to do? And he has a completely reasonable response. But the lesson isn't in the reasonable response. The lesson is in the unreasonable response. I imagine Elisha gets up like, man, what's wrong with you? And he's like, do you not see all of this? And look what Elisha says. First words out of his mouth, don't be afraid. That is not a reasonable response when the army is outside and they've come for you. That is not a reasonable response when you're scared and freaked out. But this is what I this is what you've got to see is that Elisha is having an unreasonable response because he's neither scared nor freaked out. Elisha tells him what I need to tell some of y'all right now. I know how it looks. I know what the situation feels like. I know what the situation looks like. I know what the doctor has said. I know what people are telling you. I know what's on the news. And my word to you from the Lord today is don't be scared. That's right. I said it. Don't be scared. And I know you say, how can you tell me not to be afraid? They're talking about recessions. They're talking about layoffs at my job. Gas prices have gone out of control. And I drive an SUV with a 20 gallon tank. My gas is almost as much as my, how can you tell me not to be afraid? I'm telling you, don't be afraid because we make bad decisions when we make them out of fear. Don't be afraid because when you make a decision out of fear, you make a decision based on a short-term circumstance, not a long-term vision. When you make a decision out of fear, you're making a decision based on what you're going through now. And the one thing we know about what you're going through now is that that will change. Elisha tells him, don't be afraid. you got to calm down. You can't keep rolling like this. You can't be freaked out every time something goes wrong. But his servant has a reason to be afraid. He knew. He's new. He hasn't seen what Elijah's seen. He doesn't know what Elijah knows. He's new and he didn't know. Here's what Elijah has. Elijah has experience. I want you to understand. When you've had experience with God, when you've had experience in the world, you can see the bigger picture. When you've had experience, it broadens your perspective, which gives you a different perception. You can see more information, which allows you to apply it differently. Here's what's going on. He's freaked out because he does not know what's going on. Elisha, by contrast, telling him, calm down. Don't get messed up because I've been in this before. I want you to understand what Elisha is trying to get him to understand is that based on my experience, this ain't nothing to worry about. Elisha understood that God will never leave you or forsake you. Elisha understood that the same God who in Isaiah 41 said, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand is the same God that was taking care of them then and the same God that's taking care of you now. Elisha wasn't afraid because he'd had some experience. I need some of y'all to know you've got some experience. You've got some experience when you were freaked out. You've got some experience when you were afraid and God came through. You've got some experience when you didn't know how it was going to work and God came through. Elisha had experience. Remember, this is the same Elisha that when he saw Elijah, his predecessor, he stopped what he was doing. He was a farmer. He had oxen. He burned his oxen, tore up, tore up his uh, plows, and decided to follow Elisha. He had left everything behind. He had seen a bunch of stuff with Elijah when he left Elijah and was serving as a servant. Elisha had seen Elijah stand up to a king and his wife. Elisha had, se had seen Elijah stand up to another king who was doing wrong in the sight of the Lord and stand up to him bravely with his back up. The same Elijah that 
had been afraid of that king, Elisha saw him stand back up to that king. The same Elisha that we're talking about now saw Elijah when the king sent his captain of the guard and 50 troops called down fire two times, burning up the captain of the guard and the troops. Elijah had, Elisha had seen enough to know that God was always going to be there. I need somebody to know. You're in a tough spot. You're looking out of your tent and problems are all around. You're looking out of your tent and issue after issue is coming up. You're looking out of your tent and you're saying, I'm not sure how much more of this I can take. I want you to know God's got this and God's got you. I want you to know that you're not in this alone. You're not going through this alone. You just got to look back and remember the things that you've seen God do in your life and the things you've seen God do for others because God is not a respect of a person. The same God that came through for them is the same God that will come through for you. When God says he'll never leave you or forsake you, that's exactly what he means. I want you to know what you're up against right now may be new to you, but it ain't new to God. The servant is freaked out. Elisha tells him, calm down. This ain't nothing new. This ain't a problem. This ain't an issue. This ain't even a situation. I want you to see something. They're in the same circumstance. The servant is freaked out. Elisha is like, man, it's just Thursday. I want you to understand, sometimes in life, you got to remember that God's got today, God had yesterday, and God still has tomorrow. I need you to understand sometimes in life, what you see in front of you that you think is the end of the world, if you zoom out a little bit, you'll see it's just another day with God. How many of y'all have gone through situations where you thought it was the worst day of your life and God came through and you just moved on? How many of you have gone through stuff where you thought everything would be over, you thought you would never recover, but when you look back, you realize that what you went through then made you stronger for now. I want you to understand, you got to zoom out to change your perspective so you can change your perception so that you can it, watch this, a revelation. I want you to understand that when you're too close, you will get freaked out because you will become afraid of what's going on. And God sometimes needs you to take a step back to change your perspective so you can change your perception so he can give you a revelation. I'm going to show you the revelation right now. Elisha gives him the revelation when he says, look at here. Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And I believe that the servant looked at him like, he's lost it. Because sometimes when you're acting in faith, it seems like you've lost it. Sometimes when you're believing God, to others, it will seem like you've lost your ever-loving mind. Because from their perspective, their perception is that you are not speaking things that are not as though they are. You just talking crazy. <laughs> and sometimes I want to let somebody know you just got to talk a little crazy. You got to talk a little crazy because your perspective and your perception are different. You're looking at different information. You're applying it differently to your life because you've lived the life where you've seen God come through. You've lived the life where you've seen God do the miraculous. You take God in his word and believe that when God says it, God means it and that settles it. So Elisha can tell him there's more of them with us than there are with them. You just can't see it yet. I want to talk to somebody. I want you to realize God's got this. You just can't see it yet. God's already dealt with this. You just can't see it yet. And God sent me today to give you a revelation. I told you. Perspective is information. Perception is how you apply that information. Revelation is when God peels back the curtains to let you see something you couldn't see on your own. After he tells him, calm down, there are more with us than there are with them. Elisha prays. Don't miss that. Elisha, in the midst of the problem, prays. Elisha, in the midst of the freak out, 
praise. Elisha, in the face of the enemy, in the face of the army, in the face of what he's going through, pray. Don't leave prayer out because things got tough. When things get tough, you better bring prayer in. He prays and says, watch this, not Lord, get us out. Not Lord, send an angel. Not Lord, send a breakthrough. Not Lord, send an army. Listen to the prayer. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. It's a simple prayer, but it's profound. He doesn't say, Lord, change it. He says, Lord, let him see it. I want you to know today, there are some things that you're praying for God to change that God has already changed. You just don't see it yet. There are some breakthroughs that God has already done. You just don't see it yet. There are some blessings God has already delivered. You just don't see it. It's already there. You just don't see it yet. Elisha doesn't say, do something. Elisha says, show him what you've already done. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says that after he prays, open his eyes so he may see. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. I want you to understand something. Hear me. The horses, the chariots of fire were already there. They had always been there. That's why Elisha wasn't freaked out. That's why Elisha wasn't bothered. That's why Elisha wasn't scared. That's why Elisha could say, don't be afraid. Because he knew what God was already doing. I want you to understand that you've got to adjust your perception and your perspective so you can see what God is already doing in your life. Some of you are praying for stuff that God is saying, it's right there. Some of you have been asking for things, praying for things, fasting for things, and God is simply saying, it, it's right there. But too many times, watch this, we stay closer to the problem than we do to our God. We stay closer to the issue than we do to the Lord. We stay closer to what we're going through than the God that's getting us through. Sometimes you just got to look a little further than your problem. I've told y'all this before. My house is a regular stop on the Amazon truck list. If I, don't see, if I don't see my man at least four times a week, I feel like something's wrong. If, if I don't see him but I see somebody else, I wonder if he's on vacation. I want to make sure he's doing all right. Because we become friends by the volume of stuff that just shows up. Because we have certain stuff that's on um, subscribe and save. Like y'all know I got a dog, my man Rocky. Uh, Rocky eats food. And it's better to have Rocky's food show up than for me to have to go get some food for Rocky in the middle of the night. So one time... I, um, Rocky's food was supposed to be there and Amazon had told me it was there and Rocky was out of food so I'm asking, so I call customer service like, where's my package? Where's my delivery? And they were like, no, no. Your delivery has already come. And I'm sitting there like, bruh, I promise you, I would know if there was a 37 pound bag of dog food at my house. Said, I'm telling you, sir, your delivery has already come. So I'm mad. I'm talking back and forth with them. I'm about to go off. And my wife comes by and says, hey, don't forget to bring that box in in front of the garage. I'm sitting there now with egg on my face. Because I was expecting the delivery to be on the porch. I never went to go check in front of the garage because I was expecting the delivery to be where I always thought it would be. I never looked far enough to see if it might be somewhere else. I went outside, big old box, 37 and a half pounds of dog food, 
and I call the man on the phone, I am so sorry. He says, sir, don't worry, it happens all the time. But you have to trust us when we tell you it's already there. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand if I can trust Amazon, you can trust God. If I can trust somebody who I don't know where they are, don't know who they are, don't know if they'll come through, you can trust the God who has a cattle on a thousand hills. You can trust the God who healed you when you were broken. You can trust the God who's always made a way. You can trust the God that's already came through. I want you to understand, you may be missing it, but God is already provided. God has already healed. God has already given you a breakthrough. God has always already made a way. You've just got to look further than you've been looking. You've just got to look wider than you've been looking so you can get it revealed to you what God has already done. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know it's already there. Your blessing is already there. Your breakthrough is already there. What God is going to do is already there. You just got to adjust your perception so that you can get a revelation and see what God's already doing. You've got to make the adjustment so that you can expand your perception to receive a revelation because it's already there. Thank you for joining us this week. Listen, I want you to adjust your perspective. I want you to adjust your perspective to see that you're not making it without God. No matter how things are, things will be better when you've got God in your life. So if you're ready to get saved, if you're ready to really make a commitment to God, or if you're ready to join the church, you want to be an official part of the St. Paul family, or if you just need special prayer, we want to pray with you and for you. Whatever it is you need, we want to be there for you. And we can do that if you'll just go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org. Under contact us, there'll be an option there for you. You reach out to us, we'll reach right back out to you. We'll walk you through salvation and make sure that you understand that you are saved and blessed by God. We'll walk you through church membership, make sure you're an official member of the St. Paul family. But if you just need prayer, we want to pray for you too. So just go to our website and under contact us, reach out and we'll reach right back out to you. Listen, thank you for watching. Listen, like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. We want to make sure that you're getting all of our content whenever it comes out. We want to be a blessing to you, your family, and everybody that you know. So listen, not just like and subscribe, but hey, share it. Send it out to somebody. Email somebody. Hit it on your Twitter. Hit it on your Facebook. Hit it on your uh, Instagram. Let people know that the word of God is going out from St. Paul to Oxford Hill. Share what you've been blessed with so others might be blessed too. Listen, if you want to support our ministry, we appreciate it. Listen, every dollar counts. Every dollar you give is an investment in kingdom building. Here at the St. Paul Church, we want to build souls. We want to build the community because we are building God's kingdom. So if you want to give, no gift is too small, no gift is too large. You can give your tithe, you can give an offering, you can give a special gift unto the church. Just go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org slash give, and there'll be giving options there for you. We really appreciate your support. It helps us get the word out and do ministry here and all around the world. Now, hang in there, for, hang in there with me for another second for this week's Williams Weekly Challenge. The word of God tells us not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Listen, this week, a strange thing happened in my house. I got on the phone with Amazon because I was mad about a package not showing up. But here's the thing. The package was there. It just wasn't where I expected it to be. My perception was that Amazon had messed up when the reality was Amazon had already delivered. How many times in your life have you perceived something to be going wrong and God not to be coming through, but God had already done it, you just hadn't seen it? This week, my challenge to you is simply to adjust your perception so you can see what God is already doing. Many times, it's not that God hasn't blessed, we're just not seeing it properly. So this week, adjust your perception and see what God is already doing. God bless you, I love you, and we'll see you next time.